So the mission of the USJ Golf Museum and Library is to preserve and celebrate the history of golf. Our goal is to really educate people about the ways in which golf captivates us as humans and putting golf in a social, political, economic context that's of relevance to them. Ultimately, we want our visitors to find a moment or a story that they can relate to that connects with them. In my opinion, it's incredibly important to preserve the history of the sport. And it's one of the things I like to say is that myself and my team, we are museum professionals first, and golf is our subject matter. So we are cultural historians, so we are very much in the business of preserving and celebrating these moments to survive long after we're gone. Um, and golf has many of those amazing moments. And our work is really centered around taking care of these objects, providing connections with our visitors and our champions and our players to these great moments in the game. And if we weren't doing that sort of work here at the USGA, no one else would be. So it's extremely important. So nice to meet you. Thanks Welcome. for having us. Yep. I was just saying, I've lived in Jersey for a long time. I didn't even know this was here. It's a bucket list item, uh, right? for sure. Apparently. For golfers everywhere. Awesome. All right, so where do we start? Let's get started. So you are in the world's largest and most comprehensive collection related to golf in the world. We have about 85,000 artifacts in the collection, mm -hmm. um, a library with over 100,000 volumes in more than 25 languages, three quarters of a million photographs, and about 300,000 hours of film and video wow. footage. Okay, room one. Room one. The Bob Jones room. So you were in the Bob Jones room. This was the original library in the house. You can see it's got that sort of neat architecture, original floors, original walls. Bob Jones, obviously one of the greatest amateurs of all time, um, sort of retired at the peak of his game in 1930. And here you can see the breadth and the depth of the material that we have related to Jones, probably one of the best in the world. Um, we had the benefit of having Jones be on our museum committee. Um, and he gave the bulk of his memorabilia to us throughout his life. Wow. So some of the highlights that I like to point out is behind you, the Stevens portrait. You may have seen this uh, in Butler Cabin. This is actually the original painting. This is one of um, our visitors' favorites. This is actually a painting that Dwight Eisenhower did mm -hmm. um, of the 16th at Augusta. Yeah. And gifted it to Bob Jones. So again, trying to just show the diverse side of our champions. So now we're going into the Ben Hogan room. People obviously very interested in Hogan, kind of a unique, very interesting yeah. character. I think people will say not only one of their favorite golfers, but also very intense, uh -huh. very focused. Um, and here we really try to tell all of the different sides of yeah. Hogan. As a player, as a writer, uh, we talk about Follow the Sun, which is the movie based on his life, and then of course his professional victories. So got everything from this little trophy here is the first trophy he ever won. We have a replica of his locker That's at so Shady cool. Oaks. Yeah, exactly. wow. Exactly. That's so cool. The trophy case in the middle obviously highlights um, some of his wins. In the center of that trophy case, you see um, the Hickok belt. Um, Hickok belt, of course, going to the athlete of the year. Uh, That's so cool. Which he won in 1953. It's amazing to see what they wore when they played golf. Exactly. A little bit different than today, yeah, right? right? So now we're headed to the Jack Nicholas room. This is the newest addition to the museum, opened in 2015. You can sort of, it still smells new. Yeah, it, it does. sort of looks new. I should say ahead of us is not related to Jack Nicholas, but this is President Eisenhower's golf cart. No way. Uh, this came to us from the World Golf Hall of Fame in St. Augustine, and I knew I had to have it. It's an amazing three-seater, you know, golf cart cool with the fringe that? on top. Just love it. <laughs> anyway, Jack Nicholas room. Um, this room is a little bit different than our others because actually everything is told first person through Jack's perspective. So we spend a lot of time with him and his team mm -hmm. building the content for this exhibit. But some of the highlights that I love in this room, just really neat things are, you know, the first check that Jack ever won, you know, a Mother's Day card that he made for his mom. Wow. So I, I tend to sort of like the more personal things. I love it. What's the story with this statue? That's so this is wild. a statue by Zeno Frudakis, who you may know he did the Payne Stewart statue at Pinehurst. No way. Yeah. That's probably one of his better known. Um, sure. So he commit, we commissioned this, I believe, for this room. Um, this is, of course, Jack at the 1980 US Open, Jack sort of famous back. 
yeah. famous pose, Jack is back. So now we're entering the Arnold Palmer room, where we talk about one of the game's greatest champions, of course, Arnold Palmer. Um, when we decided to open the museum and name it after Mr. Palmer, he said, sure, absolutely, but you have to include this portrait. So this is a portrait by an artist named Jim Chase, made up of over 23,000 words. Wow. It took him about 14 years to make, and he surprised Arnold Palmer with it. This is one of the most amazing pieces of art you've ever seen. And we have this touch screen where you can sort of dive into the portrait um, and look, for example, if you look in his eye, you can see the name of his first wife, Winnie, mm -hmm. over and over and over again. And you can see quotes that Arnold Palmer said or places that he went um, and really just an amazing wow. piece of art. So. We also have a great uh, relationship with the Palmer family still. So a lot of the objects in here are also on loan from them. So we can, we can share different parts of Arnold's story too. So now we'll head into the Mickey Wright room. As I say, uh, the first, currently the only room dedicated to a woman, but hopefully the first. Um, Mickey Wright, some say who had the best swing ever, um, won 82 times and I got a call that she'd passed away and anything that we wanted, the USGA wanted, we were the first to have. Wow. So of the things she gave us, she was most upset about giving this practice mat up. And we actually found one on her back patio that she'd replaced. Wow. She'd just shag balls onto the golf course where she lived. You see, this is a training aid that she made herself. Also similar, you know, had a similar mentality to Hogan, just rigorous very diligent with practice and that's the first swing sleeve jacket device exactly that's crazy this is the crown jewel of the museum welcome to the hall of champions Ooh. this houses the original trophies in our collection which you see in front of you in the case in the center you see the two open trophies and the two amateur trophies so we used to give out the original trophies until 1985 and then they were sort of coming back to us, you know, someone was eating ice cream out of it or having a few <laughs> beverages. Uh -huh. So they've now been retired and live here permanently at the museum. But otherwise we have a trophy that goes from champion to champion. And then we have what we call a media replica. So you can see right here, this is the women's amateur trophy. It's the oldest trophy in our collection given in uh, 1896 by a member of Scottish Parliament, Robert Cox, which is why you see the Scottish thistle, the mm -hmm. tartan from his clan. It, it is leaning a little bit. People ask me that all the time. <laughs> and you've got the US Open trophy here with the winged victory on the top and the US Amateur. This is actually the second iteration of the US Amateur trophy. The original one, I don't know if you've seen it, was much more ornate. We have a replica in the gallery. It actually burned in a fire oh, wow. um, at East Lake. So we changed the design the U.S. Open trophy also burned in a fire, but the design remained the same. And then you see on the bronze plaques around you, starting here in 1895, the names of all of our champions. And it goes all the way around and around to 2023. You can really kind of stand in this room and get an amazing sense of the history of golf in this country. Totally. Some, of the, some of the things I love to point out, um, Tiger Woods, of course, wins three consecutive junior amateurs and three U.S. amateurs, one of the greatest stretches of match play probably ever. Is there a talks of a Tiger room eventually, or is that? You know, people ask me that all the I'm time. Sure. Tiger has held on to a lot of his things, so we of have course. a few things from him, but um, absolutely, it's yeah. an important part of the story we want to share. Um, currently working with him and his team on some things for the Hall of Fame, so yep. hopefully down the road, seems like a logical next step. Yeah, of course. Now we are entering the chronological history of golf. Okay. So this is the first U.S. Open medal, which was won by Horace Rollins in 1895. Um, looks a little bit more elaborate than the one they get today. Um, and this is the mashie that he used in 1895. So again, amazing that we have artifacts yes, from our incredible. first championship. I'm thinking that. How do you get yeah. these things? Exactly. 1895. Exactly. Wow. So now we move into the golden age. So the golden age, we're talking about really 1919 to 1930. At the 
center of get this gallery, um, we have Calamity Jane. So this is the putter that Bob Jones used to win 10 of his 13 national championships. What's even more crazy is we have um, the ball that he used to win the Grand Slam in 1930. <laughs> wow. Um, and the scorecard from that event as well. We have a rich history of artifacts um, during wartime. These are two golf balls that are made out of shoe leather yeah. from prisoners in a German concentration camp, wow. which is crazy Jeez. and shows just the level to which people would go to play golf. That's an wow. important part of the story too. Heroic comeback. So we were talking about Ben Hogan earlier. This is probably one of the second most famous clubs in our collection. This is Ben Hogan's one iron from the 1950 US Open at Marion. Mm -hmm. So this shot, this photo we know well, Hogan on 18 to force a playoff. Actually after this shot, the club and the shoes were stolen out of his locker and disappeared for almost 40 years. They were discovered in, for lack of a better term, a garage sale mm -hmm. by a golf collector, mm -hmm. authenticated by Hogan and donated to us. So this is probably one of our most loved artifacts, Alan Shepard, of course, a voracious golfer, um, in 1971 sort of plans this secret golf mission to the moon. So this is the head of a six iron on a tool that collapses, and it's a tool that, that's used to collect uh, lunar rock samples. So he worked with one person at NASA to create this contraption, took this and two golf balls in a sock, and essentially not smuggled it up his spacesuit, but that's yeah. pretty much what he did right. um, to play golf on the moon. So the first shot, you know, he's of course swinging like this because of his suit. The first one he shanks mm -hmm. and the second one he hits and says, goes miles and miles and miles. <laughs> the club comes back down, sits in quarantine for about a year and then he donates it to the USGA in 1974. One of our most loved objects, there aren't that many things that have been to the moon and come back. <laughs> All right, we're going to head down to the vault now, and there's some unique stuff in there. Absolutely. Do you let a lot of people in there? Or? Nope. Nope? Okay. Nope. Um, we access. actually, this is a space that's accessible only to museum staff. Um, a lot of the USGA staff does not even have access here. Okay. Um, mostly because it's a working space, um, and but we're happy to share it with you, give you a bit of a behind-the-scenes look Let's do it. at what we have, so come right. on down. Come on in. So this is the vault. We have a couple different types of material down here. Um, in these drawers, we have championship scorecards I was mentioning. So when the championships are complete, the scorecards are shipped back to us and they live here. Um, and we keep them for historical record. And then often we'll have, if a player makes you know, a hole in one or has a particular record, we'll often reproduce a scorecard for them. Oh, that's cool. um, but the championship scorecards live here. There's no happier day for me than when the scorecards make it into this building. Yeah. Because there's a lot that can happen between the championship site and here. So this is our collections um, processing table. So on this table, you have things that are in various stages of coming into the collection or coming out. So. In front of you, um, we're just about to announce um, we were donated the memorabilia by the Sifford family. Yeah. Charlie Sifford, of course, mm -hmm. who um, became the first African-American to get his PGA Tour card. So these are some objects that we got from the Sifford family. This is Charlie Sifford's mini presidential freedom. Obama gave him the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2014. So his son, Charlie, has held on to the original one, but this is the mini pin that he donated, and then the program from that ceremony, which is really neat. I'm an art, art historian by training, so fine art, growing that collection, is important to me, <laughs> mm -hmm. personally. Um, so this is our Rembrandt print, um, etching from 1654. Actually, the sport of golf, not golf, so. We collect uh, material related to other stick and ball games. Mm -hmm. Golf is really more like hockey than it is like golf, but um, Rembrandt, of course, one of the greatest artists of all time. So this is the drawer of our championship medals, some of them. We've got, you know, all different types of contestant badges, you know, all different types of tees. Wow. Um, do you know what these little guys are up here? Do you want to take a guess? Do you know what it is? Is it a golf Russian doll? Does it hold a bottle so, of liquor? You are correct. 
a Prohibition era wow. figurine. <laughs> We have Bryson DeChambeau's hat from the 2020 US Open. Bryson DeChambeau, of course, signs things backwards and in reverse, which is sort of one of his signature things. Mm. I don't know why, there but we, we also have a hat from when he won the US Amateur and it's the same. In my opinion, it's incredibly important to preserve the history of the sport. And it's one of the things I like to say is that Myself and my team, we are museum professionals first, and golf is our subject matter. So we are cultural historians, so we are very much in the business of preserving and celebrating these moments to survive long after we're gone. Um, and golf has many of those amazing moments, and our work is really centered around taking care of these objects, providing connections, with our visitors and our champions and our players to these great moments in the game. And if we weren't doing that sort of work here at the USGA, no one else would be. So it's extremely important.